your years of experience, expertise and cumulative insight, what is your fundamental commandment for dressing up a bride? You know Priya, the first thing that somebody who is in design needs to understand that you're not really designing for a mannequin, you're designing for another human being. Yep. And a bride, when she's getting married, she wants to look her best, but that does not necessarily mean that she's feeling her best at that time because you know, she can become a bridezilla. There's a lot of pressures, people wanting to lose weight, you know, the constant pressure of trying to be somebody that you're not. I think it's very, very important for you to understand that you're dressing up another human being who's very unsure of what her life is going to be. Yeah. And be a little compassionate. I think, I, th I, I think while other brands dress up brides, we dress up human beings. Are there any bridal do's and don'ts, Sabia? Um, are there common mistakes that brides make? Are there common mistakes that mothers, well-meaning mothers and mother-in-laws of the bride-to-be make? Um, any advice you can give them? You see, the biggest mistake that a bride does is there's this humongous pressure to be somebody else. And you know, that is where the spirit of becoming a beautiful bride completely gets destroyed because I think every bride has a particular DNA. Right. Like, you know, there is a bride who would like modern clothing. There's a bride who likes traditional right. clothing. There's a bride who likes none of it. There's a bride who likes a lot of fuss. There's a bride who does not like a lot of fuss. I think it's very important for everybody to recognize that, you know, don't, don't pile your uh, unfulfilled wishes on one girl. Right. Let her decide for herself what she wants to do. <laughs> don't put peer pressure on that poor little girl who doesn't even know what some of the rituals mean. But yet at the same time, I think it's very important to be a little respectful to tradition. Right. Because you see, if you look at Christian weddings, you know, people might wear a dress or they might wear a gown, but it is almost invariably white. Right. And I, I think in India, India is like you said, I think India is divided into two groups of people. One group of people who think tradition is cool and the other group of people who think tradition is not so cool. But let me tell you something, not to be traditional on your wedding day is totally uncool. Right. I think that's one day in your life where well, you, you should, should celebrate being Indian. What happens at destination weddings? I hear so much about it of late. Um, does that change the way you approach your design philosophy? Does it mean that your outfits are necessarily lighter? Are they more Western? Uh, how, do you, how do you design differently for that? Okay, I'll tell you the most. I think many, how many women are here? Uh, can you just raise up your hands and tell me how many of you have gone to a destination wedding recently in the next, in the last one year? Okay, I'll tell you what the big pain is. The big pain in a destination wedding is not about packing heavy, packing light. It's about jewelry. Most people are frightened having to sit in customs for two hours or three Absolutely. hours declaring their jewelry. I, th I think for destination wedding, see what happens is just because you're going for a destination wedding does not mean that you want to dress less. Right. So everybody for the main two or three functions still want to look their best, but they want to look their best without having to wear too much jewelry. Right. You know, we cracked this about two years ago when we saw that this destination wedding thing was trending very big in India. Right. And everybody was trying to do a wedding outside the country. So we came up with one of our biggest hits, which was called the Maharani blouse, which was a blouse which was high neck, which was completely embroidered to look like a big neck piece. And with that, you just needed to wear earrings and a dupatta and a lenga. You didn't, and it was full sleeve, which meant that you needed to wear a cocktail ring. You didn't, didn't need to wear bangles at all because the entire blouse was embroidered. That became our biggest trend in the last two years because every girl, and there has been uh, copies galore, whether in films, whether in high street, every girl who was going for a destination wedding chose to wear one of this because the fathers were very happy because that meant, uh, you know, saving on jewelry money. Saving big time on jewelry money. Right. And they were very happy to look grand without having to carry too much jewelry is there a recipe for a perfect outfit would you say that you have a sangeet and you have a cocktail and you have and it's often a bit confusing you want to dress differently for each event you want to be lighter for the cocktail and heavier for the reception and the wedding um but is there how would you tell a young bride in the room somebody who's about to get married how would you tell her to go about approaching each of the events See, Priya, you know, I have never been a big endorser of schizophrenic variety in the sense that you cannot look like Madonna today and Gayatri Devi tomorrow and something <laughs> else day after. I, I just think that a woman who's well-dressed is a woman who has a certain level of consistency. Right. You know, 
I don't want to take names, but you know, sometimes I don't oh, understand. Oh, please take names. Like in the sense, <laughs> right? you know, there please are there are certain groups of designers who are very homogenous. Like let's say, you know, they would think a certain way, they would behave a certain way, their clothing would have a certain ideology. Like, like for instance, you know, if you look at uh, the ethnic uh, Indian clothing, there's Anamika, there's me, there's Anuradha Vakil. If you look at Bollywood glamour, there is Shantanu and Nikhil, there is Gaurav Gupta, there is Manish. So, you know, what happens is when people, I understand a lot of, a lot of girls don't want to wear the same designer for the all, all, all functions. three functions. But I think it's nicer that if you choose within a certain pool of designers, where you still have different clothes, but the DNA of the clothing still remains right. the same. What really becomes an eyesore in a wedding is when you look like you're wearing costume and not clothing. Exactly. It's not an extension of your personality. Yeah. You're just aping someone else. You're and aping trying someone to be... and people look through it. You're wearing I, I a look. You're not wearing yourself. You're, you're, not, you're not wearing yourself. And then 20 years later, when your children look at your pictures, they look at you and say, Mom, what were you thinking? Or rather, who are you? Uh, who are you? Yes. Mm -hmm. How much has your own brand's DNA changed over the years? Um, was Sabya Sachi Mukherjee, when he started out as Pepsi, um, different from what he is today? Were, your, were the essence of your clothes different then to now? What is your brand's DNA all about today? I think it's very important for a brand to have a certain amount of consistency Absolutely. in a look. Because today, you know, like I keep saying that, you know, if Chanel didn't do the quilted Absolutely. bag, or if Burberry didn't have its checks, they yes. would not have their DNAs intact. I think it's very, you know, when people come to buy from Sabya Sachi, they want to buy something that is quintessentially Sabya Sachi. We have, over the years, done a lot of deviation of our clothing, but more or less the DNA has remained the same, which is Indian traditional cultural, cultural clothing with a twist. And we Great. intend to keep, it that, keep that for the next 100 years. Thank God for that. Thank God for that, Sabya. How important are trends in bridal wear? And if they are important, what would you say are the predominant trends for the season ahead? Okay, let me tell you about a trend that I started with became a monster which I want to kill now, which is contrast. <laughs> Everybody who comes to me wants a red sari with a green blouse and I'm like, come on, let's get real and let's get a little more imaginative. And you know that, you know, they said that, you know, once you start a monster, it becomes a Frankenstein and then it eats you up. You know, in Indian weddings, one thing that is very important that people have to see is there's too much distraction. What is very important in, to make a wedding look beautiful is a visual edit. And I, I think more than wedding planners, what people need are stylists right now who can visually edit out all the riffraff and say this is what a wedding and what is uh, wedding needs to look like. And what is very important is since the bride is the focus of the bread, wedding and I would like to believe that she is, uh, it's very important to keep her in monochromatic colors. For right. instance, if you're wearing a red and gold, wear an entire red and gold rather than putting a little bit of peacock in it or this and that. If you're wearing a full gold or a full beige, I think the big trend in wedding right now is going to be the back of monochromatic colors because what happens, it automatically focuses you as the focus Absolutely. and the rest of them all become extras because they're wearing their reds with their pinks. So the rest can wear the sabya red and greens and the bride wears red and red. The bride wears the new sabya red and red. And also I think it's very important for you to understand the importance of clothing versus jewelry because sometimes what happens is two positives can make a big fashion negative so if you have right. you know you have to work backwards like if you if if you love an outfit and you're very sure that you need to wear that outfit you need to work the jewelry backwards right. and wear jewelry that's a little more simplified or a little more linear that it can stand out right. for instance if you're wearing a wedding lehenga which has intricate jamewar pasties and everything so what if you're wearing that what if i'm wearing for instance that? if you're wearing the gold right you can go very obscene with your jewelry you can wear anything from jada to manak to panna to even navratan because it's monochromatic it's not going to take away from your jewelry but if you wore something that looked like a Persian carpet, then wearing a single line or linear jewelry would be important. And if you have a fabulous piece right. that is very large and larger than life, or it's a statement piece or something that uh, it belongs to your family, then try working on a lehenga which is simple so that the jewelry stand, stands out. You know what? The big mistake that people do is they try to get the best of everything. Yeah. Then, you know, then, then you need a palette cleanser because what happens if you're wearing big jewelry, you have big makeup, big hair, you look like a big Christmas flowers, tree you look like a really bad Christmas tree. And I, I think that's avoidable. So you're saying one piece has to be the hero. So whether if you choose the Gagra that you fall in love with and then work the jewelry around it, 
or if you have an heirloom piece of jewelry and then you work the clothes around it does that happen to you do people come up to you with a beautiful set of jewelry and say now let's work an outfit yeah, around it yeah absolutely and you yeah. know what we do we do extensive you see i'm i'm going to say something today because you know i have always 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 loved jewelry and uh, i don't know if you know i am i'm going to plan to talk to you about it later because I want I am going to be inaugurating my jewelry line at your wedding show. One of the reasons why we have had this issue because you know over the last 10 years I have always had women come up to me whenever they had access to me asking me what kind of jewelry they should wear for their wedding and I am very passionate about jewelry and it became very difficult for me to advise them where to go because suddenly I could find out that the number of jewelers that who whose jewelry would be in sync with the kind of clothing that I want to was very limited which right. is one of the reasons i started doing menswear also because of the fact that you know i could i could refer women to very few men i mean uh, 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 male designers who would make a sherwani that would match my lehengas it looks too much of a contrast then it, it just, looks you know it becomes two different ideolo yeah. ideologies i i think it's very very important and and you know what i do is every time i do a bridal lehenga the first question that i ask myself is what is the jewelry that the bride can wear with it